This book is honestly one of the darkest, uh, most demonic books that I've ever had in my house. Um, cannot wait to get rid of it, but I knew that I had to share this. Maybe there's some sort of animal that we could make a sacrifice to. Like a giant buffalo or some sort of monster. Like something with the body of a walrus. With the head of a sea lion. About six months ago, several high-ranking reps for an essential oil MLM called Young Living inexplicably left the company. They gave their followers little indication as to what prompted their departure from Young Living, and they very quickly announced that they had joined a new MLM called Modare. Many people, including anti-MLM content creators, speculated that Modare had offered them money if they joined and brought their downlines with them. A lot of sources have also stated that they were poached by Modare and offered two times their regular monthly salary for three months in order to start recruiting their downline and switch over as many people to Modare as possible. So according to sources, this is all alleged, they have been signed up with Modare to literally bring their downline over to Modare. They're trying to get as many people over as possible and that's part of the agreement. And in that three months, of course, they will build their own downline probably bigger than they had in Young Living. At least I'm sure they've been told that that's possible because otherwise, again, why would they switch if they weren't going to be making as much, if not more money? It's conceivable that Modare paid them to jump ship. This is something that happens in the MLM industry. Companies will poach reps from other companies if they see that they're bringing in a lot of money and have large downlines. MLMs are only sustained by the constant influx of new recruits, so they'll do pretty much anything to grow their numbers. It was recently revealed, though, that money wasn't the driving force behind their decision to leave Young Living. One former rep has come forward saying that she decided to leave because, in her opinion, Young Living has been overtaken by Satan. <laughs> Since its founding in 1993, Young Living has been wildly popular among evangelical Christians and Mormons. Gary Young, the founder of Young Living, was a devout Christian, and he incorporated his strong religious beliefs into the very fabric of the company. Gary taught that essential oils harness the healing properties of plants, and that God intends for humanity to treat illness and disease with essential oils. In his view, modern medicine, specifically pharmaceutical drugs, is the result of the fall of mankind. He taught that modern medicine is man's iniquitous way of circumventing God's plan for us. Young Living reps are huge fans of books like Healing Oils of the Bible and Essential Oils of the Bible Connecting God's Word to Natural Healing. They're also quick to bring up that oils are mentioned in the Bible over 300 times, as if that's proof of God's endorsement of their medicinal use. In the beginning of Genesis, that's the first place that you see anything about oils, and you don't even realize it. Uh, this book that Lori's holding, Healing Oils of the Bible by Dr. David Stewart, it's, one, it's a tool that you may want to get. And he shares in here different stories from the scripture. In Genesis, it talks about Joseph and when his brother sold him into slavery. All of that, they were on the frankincense trail. They were, they were trading essential oils at that time. They didn't specifically name them essential oils, but when you go back and study, that's actually what they were. Then you look at Queen Esther. All through that book, it talks about Esther using oils. It goes all the way through the scriptures into the New Testament. Yeah, you know, this book was probably one of my pivotal moments with Young Living because I still remember exactly where we are, where we were probably 10 years ago when I first started reading it. And you and I were talking about it last night and that the first two chapters really are so uh, crucial and that, that if you read nothing else, the first two chapters That's are right. amazing. But that is really what solidified my belief in the power of essential oils because it took my faith which is my my faith, my higher power is, is Jesus Christ in the Bible. And it took something so precious to me and combined it with something that I'm, I was just learning about essential oils. And it really just solidified that these things are really powerful and they're really going to work. For many in Young Living, using essential oils is just as integral to their Christian faith as praying or going to church. 
they believe that sharing the good news of essential oils is a natural continuation of sharing the good news of the gospel. It's almost like Young Living has created its own sect of Christianity. Melissa Truitt, a former Young Living rep who has since joined Modere, feels like over the last year, though, Young Living has strayed from its Christian roots. In early February, she opened up to her Instagram followers about the real reason she left. It all came down to the teachings of a book that Mary Young, the CEO of Young Living, openly endorses, a book Melissa calls Demonic. Hi friends, um, if you have been around our page for very long, you know that we worked with Young Living Essential Oils for about seven years. Um, we were, we still are huge fans of essential oils. We know exactly how they work and what they do and what they did for our health. Um, we worked with Young Living, we got to basically the second to the top rank um, with Young Living. And um, after getting to that like top rank of Diamond, um, we, you get to see a little bit behind the curtain and you get to see a little bit more behind corporate and things, the way things are run. And after a little while, we started to see that this company that um, we had, you know, really worked with and really believed in was not what we had signed up for. It was something just different and we couldn't really pinpoint it. We um, heard some things and we saw some things that didn't agree with our spirit, um, but it was just something we, we just knew something. We knew something had changed and we prayed really hard about it and um, we walked away. We resigned our account with Young Living five months ago. We um, resigned our checks, everything. Uh, and that was a big decision for our family because it was a huge part of our income, but we knew that the Lord was calling us out of that. Um, yesterday evening, I got something in the mail, this book, uh, from Young Living, and it is uh, written by their RCD of Royal Crown Diamond, the forward is by CEO and uh, Mary Young. She's the CEO. It says, To Dear Diamonds. Um, this book is honestly one of the darkest, uh, most demonic books that I've ever had in my house. Um, I cannot wait to get rid of it, but I knew that I had to share this. Um, the things that they're saying for people to do, basically a seance with oils, um, things that they are wanting. Hang on. Forget it. There's no way I'm going to get through this without tearing up. Um, one of the quotes that you're supposed to say as you put these oils on you, um, and I quote, I am the resurrection and the life of my lineage. There is nothing more false than that, um, than taking Jesus out of it and putting yourself in there and putting uh, yourself as Jesus. That's just so dark and demonic. And believers, you have to know that this is written in black and white and handed down to people. You're supposed to hand this down to your team and put this in their households and know that this kind of stuff is a slow trickle. You let this into your house and it will completely ruin you. Another one is so false as well. Um, Jesus taught the use of oils to the disciples, not the masses. Um, Jesus didn't do that. And the fact that his name is in this book makes me just, it's just really, it's really bad. And um, another one Another one is, um, I am sovereign in my God self. So we are little gods. Again, so false. Um, another one is, I am the brilliant mind of my creator. So we are God's mind. And I don't know what the founder of Target, their beliefs are, or anthropology, or any of my favorite stores. Um, but I know that if they sent me a book like this, it would be the very last second that I ever spent a dime with them. Um, Young Living, none of their products will ever be in our house ever again. Um, and I just want you to know that, like, leaders, you know you got this book. And now this is in your hands. And so if you hide this from your team, you are condoning this behavior. This is going to be at your conventions. This is going to be everything that you do with Young Living. And if you do condone it, that you are handing down the spiritual warfare to everyone in your team. This is so much bigger than money. This is so much bigger than the day-to-day -day life. This is eternal significance that you have in your hands and you've got to rise up and stand up and run from this. There's no amount of money that should keep you in bondage to this company with this as a leader. As Melissa mentioned in her Instagram story, My Word Made Flesh was written by Robert Tennyson Stevens, a Young Living distributor who's reached the highest rank of Royal Crown Diamond. 
The book was co-authored by a woman named Marcella von Harding, an aromatherapist who holds certifications in things that are widely considered pseudoscientific, things like Reiki, iridology, and neurolinguistic programming. In a nutshell, the book teaches its readers that their overall health can be modified by simply changing their thoughts, feelings, and speech, and that essential oils, specifically Young Living essential oils, can be used to assist that change. Sickness or disease is said to be directly connected to negative thoughts, feelings, and words, and the cure is to think positively or utter positive affirmations. The book says that breast cancer, for example, is linked to feeling like you're unable to love or that your love is not being fully accepted. The remedy is to think or say the following affirmations. I can love and I am loving. My love is fully received. I remember how to love. I love my love being received. I feed with my love. My love feeds those whom I love. <laughs> Sorry, that's just, they're so stupid. It's like hard to keep a straight face. <laughs> the book then suggests using frankincense oil from Young Living to boost the overall effectiveness of the affirmation. This process is referred to in the book as reversing the curse. Melissa finds this type of language antithetical to Christian teachings and synonymous with a demonic seance. Throughout the book, Tennyson and Harding routinely prop up Bible verses to back up their claims. Tennyson writes, I began to realize the subconscious is 100% literal. The scripture says, by your words you shall be justified, and by your words you shall be condemned. In other words, what we say, we get. As I listen to the exactness of people's language and understand the literal nature of the universe, I see the universe gives us exactly what we're saying. Melissa believes that the authors have purposely twisted scripture to fit their narrative. While evoking the Bible and Jesus throughout the book, the authors also tell their readers to say things like, I am my divine genius, and I am your divine creator, acting with full authority and dominion in, through, and around you now and forever. In Melissa's view, referring to yourself as divine or godlike is demonic or occultic and not in line with the true teachings of Christianity. Young Living has since distanced itself from the scandal and says they don't endorse this book in any way. It's difficult for many to believe, though, that the book isn't at least passively endorsed by Young Living when it was written by one of their top earners, sent to every diamond-ranking distributor in the company, and contains a foreword from Young Living's CEO. In her foreword, Mary Young wrote, I am so grateful that Robert and Marcella wrote this most unique book to help us understand our emotions and realize that we have the ability within ourselves to put the words of transformation into action. It is fascinating to learn how we can use words of affirmation and positivity with our Young Living essential oils and supplements to help us go forward with a knowing that we can achieve our heart's desire and not only change our own lives, but also the lives of those with whom we communicate. If that's not an obvious endorsement, I don't know what is. Okay, I'm gonna shift gears now and offer my opinion on this whole situation. I'm not religious and I don't believe in the supernatural. I don't think by using the affirmations or seances as Melissa described them contained in this book that you'll actually summon demons or something. The problem I have with this book has nothing to do with its supposed demonic influence. The problem I have is that it's littered with claims that the authors make no attempt to back up with evidence. Nowhere in the book do they point to any scientific studies or research. Their only proof is in the form of out-of-context, cherry-picked Bible verses. And I don't think that this book has much to do with the teachings of Christianity. That being said, I'm not here to tell anyone how they should interpret their scriptures. I don't have a dog in that fight. If Tennyson, Harding, and their readers want to believe that the Bible supports the idea that we can cure things like cancer just by thinking positively or saying positive affirmations, so be it. There's little anyone can do to argue them out of that interpretation. That's kind of the problem I have with religious texts like the Bible. They've been interpreted a million ways by a million people, and every single person is equally convinced that their interpretation is the correct interpretation. The book, in my opinion at least, is more obviously influenced by the teachings of the New Thought movement and Law of Attraction. 
I'm not going to go into detail about New Thought and LOA in this video. I actually already produced an in-depth video about this topic if you'd like to check it out. But at its core, this movement teaches that your positive or negative thoughts quite literally attract positive or negative things into your life. The MLM industry loves to peddle this particular flavor of quackery because it facilitates victim blaming. When Sally, the single mom who joined an MLM to hopefully make ends meet, inevitably fails to make any money, her boss babe Karen upline will just turn around and say, well, it's because you're focusing too much on the negative and not being positive enough. I think this book is dangerous, not because it's demonic, but because it holds the individual culpable for anything bad that ever happens to them. You have cancer and it's your fault. You wanna cure your cancer? Well, then you're gonna have to buy our overpriced oils and say this random gibberish. Where's the evidence this works? Well, there isn't any, just trust us, bro. If anyone is interested in reading this just god awful book in its entirety, Savannah Marie actually just started a brand new ASMR anti MLM channel where she's gonna be reading through all 278 pages of this book. A link to her channel will be down in the description. Also, a big shout out to MLM Mombi who helped me with some of the resourcing for this video. Mombi is doing just amazing things with her advocacy. She played a large role in taking down Black Oxygen Organics, and right now she's taking on doTERRA for their health claims. So definitely check out our Instagram, which will also be linked down in the description. Thanks so much for watching, and a huge thank you to my patrons who helped make these videos possible. If you like this video, please be sure to subscribe and ring the bell. If you're interested in following me on social media, my Instagram handle is Taylor underscore the underscore antibot, and my Twitter handle is the antibot. If you're interested in supporting this channel financially, consider pledging to my Patreon, and I'll see you all in the next one. Say bye. <laughs>